Hi everyone, I'm Steve here again with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. All right. So um, we're going to talk about methylene blue. We've talked about this before, but we've got, uh, you've told me you've got kind of some updated information. Methylene blue is a very popular treatment and we're going to get into maybe how it affects Alzheimer's, cancer, acne, wound healing, and, and those types of things. So um, if you guys want to know more about Dr. Nario, he is at Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can look him up online and see what kind of treatments they have and what they do there in the clinic. So, doctor, first tell us, give us a description of methylene blue. Well, just to refresh everybody, Steve, with our favorite blue dye that is out there that actually claimed, uh, had a claim to fame during the pandemic. It's a blue dye, and it's actually a potent antioxidant, and it's really known to treat methemoglobinemia. So again, that's something that's uh, needing another topic of, of discussion for the next time around. And it's also used for cyanide poisoning. It's also used for infections such as antibacterial, such as UTIs. And again, the big C, I didn't want to mention the word, that's something that's a virus that actually has been used in terms of the methylene blue fat. And it's actually related to even uh, preventing hyperinflammation uh, in terms of its reaction as an antioxidant in, 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 related to, in relation to serious complications of, of these diseases. And another mood enhancer, because it actually is a what we call a, a monoamine oxidase. So that's an enzyme that increases your serotonin and adrenaline in the brain to make you feel happier. It's like an antidepressant, angiolytic, and it also has neuroprotective activity. So just a reminder for everybody of what is methylene blue. Okay, so we'll get into this. And then at the end, maybe you can tell us how, how do we... How do people get this? You know, how is it administered? So we'll get to that at the end. But okay, how about Alzheimer's, memory, cognitive function? Does it have something to do with that? Yes. Yeah, so Steve, I'm going to feed everybody new, fresh information here. From the last time we did methylene blue, I'm not saying those are old things and not there anymore. But these are, as I, as I learned it from, from conferences recently that I've gone to, that methylene blue actually has by protection against brain cell destruction by suppressing mitochondrial dysfunction and the oxidative damage that is produced by free radicals. And it also increases the ATP of brain cells. And brain cell growth is, is promoted by actually when you dampen the inflammation of the brain. And neural damage uh, may facilitate, uh, again, neural damage that is prevented or stopped may facilitate neurons or brain cells to grow and be repaired. And this is uh, something that you can achieve with low doses of methylene blue. You don't need high doses for this. It's a very safe intervention for improving memory and for the treatment of acute and chronic conditions of the brain. So low doses of methylene blue can increase the, can be actually, uh, the increase of functioning of the brain can be seen through MRI imaging even. And this is shown specifically in the activities of the brain related to attention and short-term memory tasks. So this showed up in the MRI lighting up with prefrontal, parietal, and even occipital cortex of the brain. And by enhancing memory retrieval by 7% of an increase. That's why chronic uh, supplementation of uh, methylene blue even has proven to lower down the amyloid plaques of Alzheimer's thus improving learning and memory for these patients. But this were tested in our Mickey Mouse um, subjects, which are the mice. And right now it's actually gonna be undergoing human studies. And this is something that we need to see, but hey, what's, what's wrong with taking it now when you actually see our furry friends getting benefits from it, right? Okay, so I know that um, you guys treat some people with uh, cancer in your clinic and you work with another clinic uh, you kind of work with them um, is is methylene blue something that you might use in your protocol for this yes another finding for methylene blue actually is it reverses this dependency of, of cancer cells for 
less oxygen because they work better with a less oxygen state, lower oxygen state in the body. And that's how they thrive. Methylene blue increases this oxidative, oxidative uh, in, uh, increase in, in supply of, of oxygen to cells. And, and that's why depriving these cancer cells from the ability of proliferation or growth. The results of actually the studies that have been done with methylene blue in cancer uh, suggested that it highly be uh, considered to be used with photodynamic therapy, which is the light. So the UV light, infrared light that uh, I think we spoke about last time. And this actually was tested in different types of cancers, including colorectal, uh, melanoma even. And, and when I mentioned to you about the UV light, it increases the potency or increases the strength of methylene blue when combined together. Okay, so um, I kind of got that oxygen is bad for cancer, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and this helps with that. So, all right, we know that uh, most people that listen to this uh, channel are not teenagers, um, <laughs> but you listeners may have kids that may have issues with acne. So does, is, is methylene blue something that you could use for that? How, how is it, how does it affect acne? Well, Steve, acne is now, as you see, it's not just a teenage problem. You would see, I see adults here that actually are growing acne because of hormonal changes. But the specific study of methylene blue, it actually was a split face trial, meaning half of your face has methylene blue, other half of the face, no methylene blue. But this was actually combined with photodynamic therapy. Again, light to potentiate the action of, of uh, methylene blue. And this, these were subjects that actually had mild to moderate acne. So that, that's a lot. And when, when methylene blue was applied, it was applied as a gel because you don't want it to be dripping all over the place. It's when you want to get stuck on, on these acne lesions. And the maximum um, weeks that the study was done was in two weeks and three sessions actually uh, were, were done per week. And the study showed that methylene blue therapy, that as part of the face that had it, had more potent reduction of acne severity in terms of patients, um, again, presentation, and the tolerance of the therapy was actually good. It's pretty safe and uh, no complaints about it. Okay, one more question before we get into how do we take methylene blue, and that is wound healing. You talked a little bit about how you maybe mentioned that methylene blue can, uh, can affect uh, healing of wounds. Can you describe that? You know, what kind of wounds and what does it do? Right. Again, Steve, we have to thank our furry friends here for this specific study. Wound healing was actually seen in diabetic mice in this specific study. So methylene blue promoted the spread or growth of new blood vessels, which is which is called the VEGF or vasculoendothelial growth factor increase. And also they saw the cells and the thelo cells proliferate and grow. And this actually pr promoted um, faster migration of uh, repair cells called fibroblasts to actually start making the skin thicker and have more hydration. And methylene blue also in this situation prevents what we call cell breakage. Because when you break more cells, you create a lot, actually more oxidative stress and a lot of uh, metabolic waste that could prevent the other cells around it from functioning and healing better. So this is something that uh, as, as methylene blue gets into this, uh, this situation of wounds, uh, this is something now being considered in humans as well. Okay, so now the big question. I know that uh, methylene blue can be received as an IV, a drip. So tell us about what you just said for acne, it's a, a, a cream or a gel. Mm -hmm. So what are the different ways that methylene blue can be administered? Right. So Steve, uh, again, when I mentioned about the, the, the gel, the creams, these are the less common still. It's always the most common one is going to be oral and IV therapy. And IV therapy, that's what we do in the clinic. And this is something that is done in a medical facility. So you, uh, that's something that I don't want our patients to play around with in their homes. And of course, IV actually has, of course, 
you have to be more cautious about it because of side effects, because it passes through your vein, but it, it prevents the more common oral side effects of methylene blue, just such as gastric irritation and even um, nausea, stomach upset, and even diarrhea because you're giving it through the vein. So let's talk about the most common form of oral, uh, of the form, which is the oral that people are taking out there nowadays. Low dose methylene blue is now defined as around 10 to 30 milligrams per day. And the dose again becomes individualized. It's not the same for everybody. You have to find your dose for the reason that this is something that I would say uh, everybody's different, meaning this is where personalized medicine comes into play. And how do you know that this is your dose? This is when your symptoms abate. That's why you slowly go, go up the ladder to these two specific dosings. And another common one, not only oral as a pill or a tablet, as a liquid. So this is now also something that you can gargle and, and, and especially for oral infections, uh, especially when the big C was there, you gargle so that you can kill the infection in your throat. And it's a 1% oral solution. You can start with 0.5 mil twice a day for the first week and gradually increase the dosage every two days, again, until you get your dose, until you, that maybe that sore throat goes away, that infection in your mouth goes away. And take always the seventh day off every week so that the body could reset. But here's a caution. And this is something that came from the professional compounding centers of America as they analyze online products that are out there that people are buying without any prescription from a doctor. There were high amounts of impurities, such as aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, mercury, and lead. Of course, the higher the strength, the more impurities they get. That's why get your medical professional to help you with this so you can get the cleaner version and the safer version of methylene blue. And always a reminder, UV light. Use UV light along with this to potentiate the effect of methylene blue. May it be infrared, uh, these are light activators for, for uh, methylene blue. May it be in a mouthpiece, may it be through the IV that has a light in it, a light source, or you using infrared lights in your body after taking methylene blue. Those are better combinations to get the maximum effect of methylene blue. Okay, so um, you guys obviously talk to your um, medical provider about this if you're interested in this, but I... I... I would, I'm thinking then you would start your patients off if they're doing an oral at 10 milligrams and then go up to 30 and that's how they would find their dose once their symptoms subside. Is that right? That is correct, Steve. And to show you, I'm taking my methylene blue as well. <laughs> it's something you take. Yep. It's a part of the arsenal, if I may say. All right. So that there you go, everyone. Part of Dr. Nario's protocol is methylene blue oh one thing people are so concerned about staining of teeth when they gargle it actually just brushing removes that and it's not going to stay long in your mouth so i get that a lot in terms of questions from patients so just to bring it out there before we end okay well uh thanks for your input on this dr nario we appreciate you being here well thank you steve for having me again as we all know knowledge is power and thank you for letting me provide you with edge on longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.